Sazazi. Hello, everybody. Today, I am with the guys from the Realm Games and Toys, and they are going to teach me how to play this game, which is Dungeon Dice Monsters, a spin off of the Yu Gi Oh! series. So in this game, you're going to have a set of models. These guys have a whole slew of them, but we're each going to use three in this sample match. You've got your little thing for identifying who you are. And then you're going to have cards representing each of the guys. For instance, the Vorse Raider here is going to be one of my units, and I'll be able to summon it in the game and use it against my opponent. You're going to have a set of dice. The dice are going to be colored based off of their strength or intensity. Uh, as well as they're going to have a different number of symbols on them. In each of your turns, you're going to roll a certain number of dice. You're going to gain those symbols. You have a little track, tracker abacus to be able to track what, what symbols you've rolled and how many points that you have. As well as you're going to have a set of tiles that you can use to add into the grid. And so you, when you successfully summon, you can put in a tile in any orientation that you want, as long as it touches one of your other tiles. Yep. And then you are able to take a character and place it on the star location in the tile. Where you place your star might be strategic you and must, might change up. You must place it adjacent to the monster lord. Sorry, I didn't inter interrupt. It must be adjacent, so it I couldn't must, do another no. one off of here. Sorry, uh, your first tile must the always first tile. be yes, first adjacent tile. Yes. to the monster lord. Okay, so the first tile has to touch the monster lord. Every other tile just has to touch another one of your tiles. Um, our characters are going to have a certain number of health points, attack, and defense, and then you can use those, uh, again, with those points that we roll and use. So we're going to do the sample trial game. Uh, oh, there are, of course, little health counters, so we've got some little 10s and 20s, as well as some red uh, gems to be able to track the damage that's been done to certain characters to make sure we know when they are going to die. So I have a Vorse Raider, a Gearfried the Iron Knight, and a Buster Blader on my arsenal, and I am up against Doug, who has... I've got the Knight of Twin Swords, the Strike Ninja, and the Thunderball. Alright, so my guys look way cooler than his guys. <laughs> the, I can assure means... you they are not. Mine are way more powerful than <laughs> his, so if I lose this, I'm quite embarrassed. What kind of starter game would have one set be not as good as the other set? Well... A Yu-Gi-Oh starter game that'll have <laughs> Yu-Gi beat everyone. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Doug is the Yu-Gi monsters and you are technically the Kaiba monsters. So I made a poor decision when I selected and I picked the weaker <laughs> set, but I look cooler so that's all that matters. Well, you know, as Kaiba does. Alright, so how I do we will, start this off? I will allow you to roll first. You can choose any three dice from your Oh, you're going to allow him to roll. Yeah. My any bad. three dice? Yeah, any three dice. So if you're looking for a certain crest, you can choose certain colors. But at the beginning, you probably want to try summon monsters out, especially in the shorter game. You want to get to your monster, or the opponent's monster lord, and kill them. So if I roll a one star, I can summon my level one Vorak Raider. Yes, if you have two, as long as when you roll your three dice, two of the crests match. Oh, two of the crests yes. match. So if I get two one stars, I can summon a one star monster, and if I get two two stars. I can summon a two summon. Exactly. The lower the, the lower the level, the easier it is to summon. Yeah, you'll have more, more so dice. It, it, it is better to go for a for a sure thing right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And how many dice do I choose? You get three dice. Three, three dice. dice. Yeah. Ah, uh, sure. So I'm taking three of my red dice, that is the basic level one dice, and I'm going to attempt to summon, so I rolled three stars, and that allows me to summon my Force Raider. Yes. So I can pick one of my tiles, and I am going to pick this one, and I'm going to place it here. You dimension the dice. Dimension I the dimension dice. the dice, and the dice like folds out and unscrolls in the show, and then the monster comes out of the middle of it. I remember that, and that's about it. So I will summon my raider there. Fun and fact, we actually do have some of the dice yeah, that the, do unfold. The Japanese ones do. Yep. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. They become the pieces. All, All right. right. So you summoned your first monster, and I'm going to try to counter it. So I gain two movement crests to my pool. And Doug gets to dimension... The Knight of Twin Swords. So he rolled a way better thing than I rolled. And he gets a cool level two monster, which is much stronger than my level one monster. Oh yes. And should have been harder to summon, but it was not. So. Now, the Knight of Twin Swords, uh, his ability, two abilities I have. Okay. His first ability is, for every one movement crest I spend, he can actually move two spaces. Okay, he's really fast. 
and when I make attacks, I can spend multiples of two to do multiple attacks on monsters. All right. So what does my Worth Raider do? Without spending an attack crest, this monster can attack? What does the three beside that mean? So that means you spend any three of your crest counters, any three combination, and it counts as an attack crest. I see. So I don't have any attack crests. I can do that in a desperate moment of needing to attack. Exactly. And the other one is zero. Ba during a battle, this monster can add an additional 20 attack power points to itself if it attacks a monster from the beast tribe. So this guy, the beaver warrior, is a monster from the beast tribe. So, so he's going to be useless in this battle. Yes. Excellent. Yes. So I'm a beast tribe killer guy. Not particularly and useful here. The, the tribe is indicated right there on your card there. Yeah, so I'm three warriors and he has a dark, a warrior, and a warrior. Very good. Okay, so my second turn mm -hmm. is coming up. Yep. And I am going to risk it for some biscuits. Okay. I'm going to roll these. So I get two movement crests and one Magic. zappy crest. Yep. Yep. Magic. So two Magic. movement, one Magic crest. And other than that, I can't really do anything. I don't want to move him just yet. Yes, sometimes you'll need those movement crests. It's better to save them. And I get a level 3 summon. I am getting destroyed here in summoning a potential. There's one other aspect we've got to leave out. Your monster lord can actually declare an attack. Ah, yes, he's at 10 attack. He has 10 attack. Yes. yes. Very good. All right, we'll place that there, and we will place the strike ninja on the board in front of you. Now, strike ninja's ability... For every one movement crest I spend, he can move up to three spaces. Much movement. Yes, and he can spend three trap crests when attacked, and item and attacking effects don't work on him, and other monsters could then pass through him. Gotcha. So he goes in invisible. Okay. And I have no attack crests, so I'm not going to move him or do any attack. Okay, I'm going to try what I tried last time, rolling three blues, and I got two stars and two attack crests, so I can summon my gear freed... The Iron Knight. The Iron Knight, and I gain two attack crests. So I can move two of these little things over, and I can summon this guy in one of my shapes. At this point, it doesn't matter as much as we've already touched now. Yes, our dungeons are connected. I will summon... Let's do this one here. I would say it is good strategies when you try to block off your Monster Lord from having, you know... I wouldn't want you to be able to come over here and attack me. Yes. I've lost a few games from just backdoor dungeon shenanigans. So that's what I'm opening up right there is the potential to do that. As well as I've summoned my knight, and my knight says I can use three trap crests when I attack. This effect only works when your monster lord is getting attacked. Sacrifice this monster during one turn, and your monster lord won't receive any damage until the turn ends. So this guy will sacrifice himself to save my guy. Mm -hmm. Or I can send three of any crest without spending a defense crest. This monster can defend. So similar to my attack but opposite. Exactly. All right, so he's a 10, 10, 30, and I've got a 10, 20, 10. And I am going to try, just for the hell of it, I can move two movement crests yep. to move two. This is a really good play. This is what I would do. Yep. And then I can spend my attack crest and to make a attack for my Worth Raider onto your ninja. And Get that 20 attack. Ninja there. And yes, I don't have any defense crests, so I cannot defend that attack. I have no trap crests, so I can't activate his ability. 20 damage is all he has for health. You have defeated the Strike Ninja. So, defeated your Strike Ninja. Can you get it back? No. He okay, is, he so he's he out of this game. Yep. So, the reason I did that was because I saw his movement potential of three. He could have gone around my guys and gotten to my uh, defender rather quickly if he had managed to do a summon. And so, I didn't want any risk of him circumventing my current defenses, and that's why I made that decision. <coughs> Apparently, it was the right one. It certainly was. <laughs> Now I'm going to be rolling level 4 crests. We have no level 4 monster to summon. However, I'm trying to get a crest, some crests to uh, fill my pool. So I get two magics. <laughs> one trap. And one trap. The trap, of course, is useless to me now that the Strike Ninja is dead, but... He's working on another trap. Exactly. Okay, and that is the end of my turn. Okay. So, I don't know what's on these dice, and he does. So he has an advantage over me, but it looks like... I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to roll my three dice. Buster Blader. And I get nice. it. And Ooh. an attack crest. So I summon an attack crest, gain an attack crest, and I can summon my blader. And my Buster Blader can do that right there. Yes, he certainly can. And that will be very difficult to defend against. So 
so he'll just hang out there. He has spend zero. This monster will not be affected by any attacks or effects produced by a monster from the dragon tribe. Okay, so he's a dragon slayer, which yep. is again, absolutely useless to me, but yes. that is fine. <laughs> he's a powerhouse. All right. So, so now I just need some movement crests and I could win this game. Exactly. I will roll some level four dice again. I get two magics and two defense crests. So that'll help me in surviving. You may go. All right, so I'm feeling the twos here. I don't know why. I'm gonna roll some two dice. And I got the ability to summon, which I can't, and a magic, which doesn't really help me. Yeah, right now I think you're just looking for the movement crests. Movement crests. Which I believe level three have two movement crests, but singles. So they have the highest chance of getting movements. The level two ones have movements times movement two. Times two. So. <laughs> All right, I finally get an attack crest, which is what I was hoping for, but I also get a bunch of magic crests. Now you probably don't know much about the Thunderball, but... I know it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, I should probably try to deal with one of your monsters. And it will be... I will spend one movement crest to move my twin, uh, Knight of Twin Swords. Two spaces. And I will attack the Vorse Raider for 20 damage. 20 damage. And I have no defense crest to use, so that just means he dies. Yep. And he has been eliminated. Wow. Exactly. All, All right. right, that is the end of my turn. Hmm. Nice. Well, I know what you said, but I'm gonna try this again. <laughs> so nice. I got my movement, yep. I can summon a guy, I don't really use that. So I can use my two movement to move my gear for you too? Uh, yeah. If I wanted to. You could also move the Buster Blade you or two. You can move him on the Monster Lord if you have an attack. So I could do that, but I'm really open to his knight. And he can spend multiple attacks to do multiple things. So it would be best for me to move him over, I believe. Ten attack? How much defense do you have? Oh, I, I have to note that my attacker, he can only attack your monster lord once. I can't do multiple attacks. Well, you can't do multiple attacks. No, uh, special sure. abilities do not work on the monster mm -hmm. lord. Yeah. Unless you're gear free. They are and it's night. just three attacks, and you can, then you win. Yeah, but you yeah. have to get three attacks off. Yeah. yeah. Three separate attacks. Three separate attacks. Yeah. Monster Lords can't defend. Alright, I'm gonna try it. I'm just gonna move this guy over yep. and I'm gonna attack your Monster Lord yep. with put, one attack. Chris. Put me Sorry. on a timer. You used your... your one attack. Oh, a movement. Yeah. I meant to use an attack. Yeah. Okay, use an attack, Chris. Perfect. And now I'm down to two HP on my Monster Lord. Okay. Alright, now I need to summon my Thunderbolt. The time is nigh and I did not do it this turn. Oh man. So that will make life difficult for me. All right, so I am looking for attack crests. That's not on the ones. Um, actually, I think the level four. Actually, I'm not sure. Blues which ones have, have the doubles. Ones. Yeah, blues, blues have, have times two. Times two. Times two. Yep. Yeah. And I think every other dice just I has need one. one more attack. So I don't need times two. I only need one more attack. <coughs> and I wouldn't mind getting some more movement. You could always mix dice if you're yeah, heart, yep. heart content. I'm gonna use my three greens. And I get a movement and a defense. Two movement. Two movement. Yeah. Two movement and a defense. And then I will spend one of my attack crests to reduce. I'm down to one hit point remaining, which means Do or die. I need to roll here and hope you don't get an attack roll. And I summon, summon my Thunderball. Thunderball, and he has magic, which will make the Thunderball do something that I don't like, and I don't know what that is yet. You might be okay. I don't think I, I have enough movements. Remember, you can move with Thunderball. Yes, I know. Um, hmm. The question is, if I go there, one, two, three is my movement, so I can do this. Okay. It's going to be that veteran... Uh, veteran player right here. I will summon it there. Now, Thunderball's special ability allows you, for three magic crests, to move straight forward until it hits a monster item, or an item, or a wall, or sorry, I guess that'll come later, a monster or an item and it destroys it. If it does not move in, into a monster to destroy it and hits nothing, it reaches, it moves until it reaches a dead end. 
So I'm going to activate that ability for three magic crests okay. to hit this wall. Yep. Then I'm going to use three movement crests. One, two, three. And then I will use three of my magic crests again to roll into him, destroying him. Destroying him. Yes. And that is just an instant kill. Can't do anything about it. That seems ridiculous. It's pretty powerful. When we do ban drafts, we usually ban him. Very interesting. Yeah, and he can do it multiple times. Like, he yeah. can... Doug lost, like, three monsters in one turn. Yeah. There was one battle. I lost three monsters in one turn to him. And yes, that is all I can do. I have no more movement crests. All right, so I'm gonna take that. Actually, I'm just gonna roll these. I'm gonna roll these three. And I get two traps and a movement. Two movement. I get my two movement. I get my two traps. And I am going to move using one, two, three, four, five, six. From there, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yes, that's a great strategy, as my monster lord only has one hit point left. <laughs> I still need another movement and an attack. Two, two. movements. Ah, oh, and you have a defense crest, eh? I was thinking I could try kill you with my Knight of Twin Swords. However, you can defend the attack. Hmm. Well, I have to go for it anyway. I will move one movement crest to move him two, and I will make an attack on your gear free for 20. For 20, and I only have 10 hit points, so I have to use my defense crest. Which is 30 defense, 30 defense so I deal nothing. So, basically, a movement wins you the game. A movement, movement and, and an attack. attack. A movement and an attack. <clears throat> Fun fact, in the Game Boy Advance game, is it? The, for uh, Dungeon Dice Monsters, if the defense is higher than the attacker, the attacker yeah. takes damage. Yeah. But not, not, not in this, no. Right. Movement oh. and an attack. <laughs> and so you are able so to move my knight moves forward and I defeat your guy in this trial battle and I am successful. That is right. You yes, have to trial battle. <laughs> trial battle. <laughs> yes. I assume the main game, you start back here, mm -hmm. there's way more monsters. You have a deck of five? Yeah, a uh, deck of ten. Ten. Ten, ten, ten yes. not three. So ten to, three to ten is quite the upgrade. And items are involved. Yep. And items. All and right. They're placed face down, so you don't know. Yep. So some of them are good, some of them are traps. Yep. So we're going to check that out later, but that was this trial, trial battle, and I win. That's one point. Yes, great job. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, this was a fun experience learning to play Dungeon Dice Monsters with the guys from the Realm Games and Toys. You can find the link to their YouTube channel and to their online store in the description to this video. Uh, Samurai Snoop is a good friend of mine and is one of the owners of that company. And uh, you can check out their page for more battles of Dungeon Dice Monsters. Until next time.